Thank you, Brittany. We switch gears now to travel into history. The year is 1960. A young Catholic senator from Massachusetts has his sights set on the United States presidency. The campaign trail brings him to the Lehigh Valley, where he leaves his legendary mark. With a new segment called Roots, here's Focus reporter Grover Silcox. The Hotel Bethlehem recently put out this coffee table book about the history of the hotel. I was poring over it and came across a mention of the day JFK stayed there. It sparked my interest and I wanted to learn what that day was like at the hotel and for the people of the Lehigh Valley. I met folks who saw and heard him speak and a few who got to speak with him. Here are their stories. Thousands of people in the Lehigh Valley lined the streets to see the young charismatic candidate for president, John F. Kennedy, when he campaigned here on October 28, 1960. He was young and he was energetic and um, he called for the best in us. He was inspiring to a lot of us. The rights of man, the civil and economic rights essential to the human dignity of all men. He was youth. He came to woo steel workers, cultivate his fellow Catholics, shore up his base, and win the state's 32 electoral votes. Pennsylvania was a really critical state to win if he hoped to win the presidency. 15,000 people met him at the ABE airport and thousands more greeted him as his white convertible made its way to the Hotel Bethlehem. That car, which was a brand new car, had to go to the paint shop after that because it had so many dings from people banging into the to get close to it. I had read that he shook so many hands that his hands were chapped and bleeding. He arrived near midnight, later than expected. The community just was overflowing with enthusiasm. Main Street was packed full of people. The next morning, Ned Book, the hotel's general manager at the time, served JFK breakfast in the Bethlehem Steel Suite on the eighth floor. He, he uh, had the same breakfast every morning, two eggs over easy, two or three pieces of bacon, and, and then rye toast, uh, and also orange juice. We opened the door, and <laughs> we go in, and we're going down the corridor, and some gentleman, I don't know who it was, he takes the cover off the, the room service uh, plate, and he says, where's the bacon? And about that time, Pierre Solinger comes out around the corner, and he says, it's Friday. And of course, at that point in time, Catholics did not eat meat on Friday, so everyone was, oh, thank heavens. We didn't make a mistake. About 8 a.m., Ned escorted the senator to the hotel ballroom, where he was to speak at a fundraiser packed with 500 people. He, he was really quite hoarse. We spoke going down in the elevator. But when Kennedy took the podium, his voice was perfect. I listened to, to the speech, and, and his voice did not, it wasn't at all hoarse. Now, I don't know how he did that, but this is where he delivered his speech, right here in this position. And he got a standing ovation. He had tremendous energy, wonderful speaker. Mel Gross attended the fundraiser with his dad, the then mayor of Allentown, Jack Gross. Yeah, it was a labor breakfast at the Hotel Bethlehem, and we have a picture of my father here um, with Kennedy shaking hands. Kennedy would be one of four U.S. presidents to visit the Hotel Bethlehem. After the fundraiser, JFK motored up Main Street to Moravian College. They had, I think, about 6,000 people inside of the uh, gym where it was held, and then an additional 3,000 outside. Gene Friedman, a sophomore at Moravian in 1960, wanted a photo taken with Kennedy, but he just wouldn't turn around. I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, Senator Kennedy, Senator Kennedy, and he whipped around. He Yes! And I said, Senator Kennedy, welcome to Moravian College. And he laughed. And he put his hand on my shoulder. And he said, um, just lead me out of here. Gene led him to the podium. But Kennedy came in through the door. When he came out, the thing that you noticed most were his hair combed over and a little bit of a... Um, tan, but mostly his accent. Kathy Klein, a sophomore at Liberty High School in 1960, skipped class to see Kennedy at Moravia. And we realized how lucky we were that we had seats, number one, 
and secondly, that we were going to see this person, and he was wonderful. Kathy would later attend to Moravian and graduate in 1967. I used to say John Kennedy stood right here in this spot. Kennedy stressed, as he did everywhere, um, his dedication to pursuing the Cold War boldly. And that was something that both candidates talked about. There were some hecklers in the back, and he put them down very professionally, like they weren't even there. Um, and then he went. JFK's motorcade followed West Broad Street through Bethlehem, where Dana Grubb's dad, William, caught it on his 8mm camera. My dad was a World War II Navy veteran. And I think he identified with Kennedy, who was a World War II uh, Navy veteran, Navy hero. Kennedy concluded his Lehigh Valley trip at Center Square in Allentown, where he spoke to a crowd of 85,000 people. Mayor Gross introduced him. His son describes the scene captured in a photo. My father is sitting right behind Kennedy on the picture. He has a, a what do you call it, a fedora hat on. Um, it was cold. It was cold that day. You can see that, and of course, Kennedy was famous for not wearing an overcoat. Kennedy, more cool than cold, left the Lehigh Valley that day and went on to become the nation's youngest elected president. He lost Lehigh County in the election, but won Pennsylvania. The nation was transitioning from having had the oldest president, now there's a new spirit, a new young guy who's going to move in new directions. I think he inspired a lot of people. As he did then, and still does today.